Hi there, and today I'm adding wheels and a motor to my tube train. Now, as I didn't plan where everything was going to go when I first built my underground train, um, I've had to do a little bit of deconstructing um, to work out where everything's going to fit in. So I'll just run you through what I've done since the last video. So if you've watched the last video, part two, um, you'll know that the windows are made up using this little uh, sub-assembly, and each panel is made up with a 1x6, uh, 2x6 running down the middle, um, with a window on each side, and then this little column which makes it stand up in the middle of the train like that. The only trouble with that is it means every uh, window section has a great big 2x6 running across the middle of it. So what I've done is I've adapted this end and I've moved the 2x6 to the end so we have two windows coming off one side rather than one window coming off each side um, and they handily sit on the support which I was using for the doors at this end so that can sit there and then that suddenly opens up a huge space here so I can put things into it and you can see I've already put some bricks in in preparation for the next stage. So I've done that on this end of this carriage and also the adjoining end of this carriage. So they're going to go together like that. Um, you'll also notice I've had to take the end windows out. That's because there wasn't quite enough space uh, to get the battery and the infrared receiver in the same carriage. So battery is going to go in one, receiver is going to go in the other. So we've taken that window out so the cable can run between the two just here. So first of all, let's build some wheels. So I'm building a very standard Lego uh, bogey. So we've got some Technic bricks here with some Technic axles, and then the standard Lego train wheels with the axle hole in the middle. So we're gonna pop one on that side, like that. Get the other brick and pop it on there, with another wheel on the other side. And then to make sure we get the correct spacing, we're going to put a 2x4 across there, like that, and another 2x4 the other end, like that, and already I can see that these are, wheels are pinching, so we need to bring those out slightly. There we go, so there's just a little bit of give on that. Then another Technic axle, another train wheel, and then another train wheel. Now, I'm thinking that these won't be seen. The part of my layout which um, will have the station, the platform will be hiding the wheels. Um, and when it's not in the station, it'll be under a hill or under the city somewhere, so it won't be seen at all. So um, these actually won't be seen at all, I think, in my layout. But just in case they were, I've added a 2x6 there and two 2x4 two plates to go on top gives us a smooth surface to add our nice Lego bogey plate on but the reason I've added these on is just in case I wanted to hide the wheels I've got a, a 1x2 brick and a 1x8 tile and then these can click on underneath there just to give the wheels a little bit more of a smooth look. But like I say, I'm not adding these right now, as I don't think the wheels are going to be shown ever. So I'm going to leave it like that, um, just as a standard train bogey. So as the carriages are both 32 studs long, they're far too long to go round Lego curves with um, fixed wheels. So I've built three of these, um, one to go at each end of the carriage on an articulated bogey. And then of course the fourth set is going to be the um, Lego Power Functions motor. But these two need to join up, so we're going to get a couple of 2x4 plates and put them on the end of this one and also on the end of this one. And we're just going to add standard Lego magnetic buffers and clips. Now I could have done that with just um, some plates and pins, but I thought the easiest way to do it is magnets. So there we have our three bogies and then the fourth one is obviously going to be our power functions. So if you're at all familiar with LEGO Power Functions trains, um, these are the three components we need. First of all we need our battery box, which we connect our infrared receiver up to, and then we connect our train motor to the infrared receiver. And then using a standard train remote, if we turn this on, 
we will see that turning this makes our train motor what? Like I say, it'll make our train motor move. Um, the only trouble is I've barely got enough room to fit the infrared receiver in my carriage, let alone this giant uh, battery box. So my next thought was, why don't I use one of the old nine volt battery backs? Because it's a lot smaller. It's still the same voltage, but it should fit in a lot easier. And all you need to do to use the old nine volt system is get an extension wire, which both have power function clips on each end, but on the light gray one, this has got an old nine volt system connector. So you can add that to this, add that to the infrared receiver. And similarly, when you turn that on, you've got power going to the infrared receiver. But then I discovered I don't even have enough space for this in my model. So, next step was this takes regular nine volt square batteries so i thought could i wire up a nine volt battery to the um, infrared receiver directly without having to have this giant box because you'll see that this box compared to the size of the battery there's quite a large size difference so the next part of the plan was using one of these very sad looking cables now these are two old 9 volt connectors which got attacked by my dog. Bad dog. Um, but I tried wiring these up, it did work but actually it was a little bit too much hassle because I've got to try and uh, cover all these wires up, they've all had their um, protective coating uh, shredded off them. Um, so I thought well why can't I just connect up the battery directly? So I bought off eBay some 9 volt battery connectors like these which clip easily to the top of my battery. So after a little bit of fiddling around, I discovered that these uh, metal prongs here, which on the power functions connectors, actually push in ever so slightly. I'm not quite sure if you can see that. If you push that in, it makes a gap between the metal and the plastic. And there. So what I thought was if I can get the ends of one of these with the bare metal and push them down in these little gaps behind the springs, the spring will clip back and hold it in place and I can power it directly to the cable. So that's what I've done here you can see the red one goes to the bottom right and the black one goes to the top left and they're just being held in by those metal clips and I've just got a little bit of grey PVC electrical tape to wrap over the top to hold the whole thing in place so it's not going anywhere. So now we need to start putting the whole thing together. Now um, the newer train bases like this come with a nice big square hole which the clip from a a train motor will fit through really easily. However, the older train bases had just a tiny one by two slot, so they're a little bit more tricky, but fortunately they do just about fit through with a little bit of wiggling like that. Then we can attach our motor to the base of the train like that, and the cable can come up ready to connect to our receiver. So I've got my power cable here and that is going to sit there ready to connect onto the infrared receiver and that's going to sit up on these red bricks. I've just popped those in to raise it up ever so slightly and that goes on top like that and we've got all our connectors which we can now join up. So this one from the infrared receiver not going to be used, that's just going to lie loose. The one up from the battery can come onto this side and the one coming up from the motor can go over to this side. Now I just need to tuck all these cables away and put the roof back on this side and we'll sort out the battery the other end. So that's this engine finished. We've got our receiver. Um, I've put two grey slopes on the top of the receiver as you can see so that will marry up with the curved roof. Um, we've got our cables all tucked in here safe and sound out of the way and then this cable is ready to go over through our connection into the other carriage. So at this point I thought I might as well add our other wheels on. So we're going to pop these on the bottom of our two coaches. There's one there. That's now running nicely. Um, while I'm doing this, also, if you're liking what you're seeing, please do give this video a thumbs up. And if you really like it, do give it a subscribe. And then you'll be notified when I make other LEGO videos. So we've got both our carriages now with wheels on. 
and this one has got loads of space for our battery to be connected up there and it can sit in here I put a small plate down there so it'll raise it up above the bogey but that power functions connector can sit down there and then the battery can hopefully sit on top if we can tuck those cables away maybe put it that way around yes and then that is low enough that the roof for the um, train which sits on top of these windows won't get in the way so let's pop that back on so the only hassle with this is I can't um, remotely turn that on and off um, as you can with power functions. I haven't got a little handy button that I can go click, click and turn the battery on. It'll mean take the roof off and change the battery, but that's fine. I um, don't intend it to be running huge amounts. Um, but um, there we go. That's all connected up. Now I just need to adjust the roof to get around this receiver. Now I have to admit that this is not the most robust piece of Lego construction I've ever done, um, but it's the only way I could do this um, with, to get round the infrared receiver, also not having any studs to connect to all around here. So my only connection points are here on the end of this roof um, and the other end here. Um, so a um, little bit flaky, but it works. So well, first of all here I've got uh, what would be a two by six, but I didn't have one, so I've got a, a two by two and a two by four. Um, with a 1x4 underneath with two of our slopes on and I'm going to connect two more to that like so and just to give that a bit more rigidity add some plates in there so there's our start and then here we've got our last two slopes with some 2x2s um, I was going to use angles but then I didn't have anything to connect it across so I had to use 1x2s one on that side and one on that side which is the wobbliest bit of this completely but we will be um, connected up with this which will make it a little bit stronger so we're going to add our two roof tiles and that's got two one by fours stacked up on it like that which connects see what i mean very very flaky indeed It connects like that. Oh no! Disaster! Right. Get it together, Jez. Here we go. There. Sorted. Right. Then the other end, we've got our other two roof pieces, like so. Um, and then here we've got, um, we've had to shorten these, so we've got. Um, some 2x2 two two slopes which are the same profile as the roof pieces and they're just sitting on a 2x2 two two plate and they click on there. So there we have what we're going to attach to our roof. We bring this over and that should happily sit on top and once it's pushed down hopefully tie everything together and keep it all nice and tight and now uh, you may have seen earlier on this end fell off but now that roof is uh, connected all the way along to that central piece over here that's now more rigid the doors are more stable and everything is much more um, rigid and uh, firm as it were and there we have got our normal roof but we've just got our little infrared receiver poking out um, and the two uh, cheese wedges there uh, just tie in hopefully slightly with the curve of the roof so there we go um, I will give it a go on the remote fingers crossed I don't know if this is going to work oh look at that yay so a few things to note I've actually mounted these wheel sets um, slightly differently so this one is you can see sticking out slightly more than this one that's to reduce the gap between them so we've only got a two stud gap between the two um, carriages um, I'm wondering if when I get it on some track I may be able to pull this one back and we get it down to one stud gap but it depends on how close they get going around the curves of um, Lego track um, but there we have it um, reduced it from three studs to two studs just to make it look a little bit neater and tidier you have got this cable running between the two but I'm um, hopefully that won't show up too much 
If we drop to this lower angle, you can see the proportions between the engine and the wheel sets is uh, very out. Um, these wheels are obviously meant for full-size trains, and a London Underground train is um, drastically reduced. It's not a full-sized um, engine, so these wheels are um, far too big to uh, be on a train of this size actually um, but I thought it was the easiest way I could power this up um, and like I said the wheels are never going to be seen uh, the platform's going to cut it in half um, and you'll just see from the uh, floor panels up um, the next video is going to be building the um, station I've got all the parts for that ready to go um, so I just need to make sure I've got everything um, that I've been has been ordered um, and start building that one um, so do let me know what you think. Um, is this uh, looking good? Um, I'm hoping you're liking what's going on here. Um, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. And like I said, please do subscribe to be notified of more LEGO videos.